Hello, welcome to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the new hybrid deployment model that was discussed last week at the Integrate conference. Let's go. All right, so last week we did announce this. Uh, this is an early access preview. You can kind of think of that a lot like a private preview. And uh, before we get into the details, let me drop this link here and I'll put it in the description of the video as well. And that is if you would like to request access to this preview, you can just fill out this form and we'd be happy to reach out and have a, a further conversation about this particular offering. Let's get into some more details about the offering and then I will go ahead and give you a demo here as well. And so the goal of the new deployment model is to allow customers to deploy Logic App Standard apps slash workflows to customer managed infrastructure. And when we think about customer managed infrastructure that may reside on premises, could reside in a private cloud, and it could also reside in other public clouds as well. Now we are taking a semi-connected stance on this particular offering. Now what does that mean? So it does mean that you get local processing local storage and local network access. But you will go ahead and access your Logic Apps through the Azure portal. And this is where the semi-connected comes into play. You naturally need to have internet connectivity to be able to use the Azure portal and to be able to go ahead and manage your Logic Apps. And this communication takes place through the Azure Arc component. And the Azure Arc is an agent that would get installed on your customer managed infrastructure. And that would provide kind of like a proxy uh, that would allow us to go ahead and access those resources from the Azure portal. Now, one question that does come up is, okay, well, what about like if the internet connection was severed for some reason? And in that case, your workloads would continue to run uh, because you have local storage, because you have local processing. And so it'd be one of those things where you may not see the, the run history during that time, but uh, you certainly could survive those, connect, those transient connectivity issues. But uh, make no mistake, like the value of the solution is when that connectivity is in place, that's gonna allow you to go ahead and use the run history um, and other management experiences in the Azure portal to go ahead and operate your Logic App workflows. Now, another interesting thing or a bit of a nuance when it comes to semi-connected as well is in Logic App Standard, we have two models of connectors. We've got the built-in that run in your dedicated compute. So those would continue to run in your dedicated compute. And in this case, they would run on premises. So that's great. Now, what would happen if uh, you wanted to go ahead and use what we call Azure or managed connectors? So things like uh, Microsoft Teams or Office 365 or ServiceNow or Salesforce or Dataverse. Those are all hosted in Azure. Naturally, you would need to go ahead and to connect to the cloud so that you could go ahead and use those connectors. So that would be another example of semi-connected. Uh, another aspect would also be integration accounts. That is, at this point, an Azure resource and those will work uh, as well, but that does require you to connect to that integration account from your local instance in order to make those scenarios work. Now you might be wondering, okay, what's the underlying runtime here? And the underlying runtime is containers and those are containers that are hosted inside a connected environment. Now, if you're not familiar with connected environment, that is an Azure container apps concept that basically allows for a host for your particular container. So we're, we're using that uh, service to, to help us out in this regard. Now, some people have asked, okay, what's the difference between this and what's been in public preview for some time, uh, often referred to as Arc enabled logic apps. And so this is the successor for that particular model. That whole sort of um, idea or concept was developed prior to ACA, Azure Container Apps, being a thing. 
And what we've done as a developer experience org inside of Microsoft is we've made a bet on ACA. So as a result, that prior investment, uh, the Arc enabled logic apps that uses the app service extension is something that we will not be investing further in. Uh, this is the platform that we will be investing in. Uh, we've got a lot of engineers working on this. We've made a lot of investments. So I'm quite confident uh, that this will reach GA in a much shorter time frame than the previous offering. And while we're talking about timelines, so we've got the early access preview available in June 2024, and then the public preview we are shooting for later this summer. Now, we've talked to a lot of customers about this deployment model, and I would kind of consider like three different core buckets that customers envision using this capability. The first is use cases where you've got local processing needs. So BizTuck migration is, is typically uh, an important one or a popular one where people do have existing BizTalk workloads. Some of those workloads may make their way to the cloud, which is fine, which is great, but other workloads may need to continue to run on premises uh, due to perhaps the proximity of some of those systems, or it could be for regulatory and compliance needs as well. Uh, we also got edge computing would be sort of uh, another element of this as well where you just might have some of those use cases where you need that local processing on the edge. You may need to survive some of the transient sort of internet connectivity um, situations and this becomes a viable model for you. We definitely see this in some of the energy sector. Now, uh, another use case, and, and in my mind, this is probably the best one, where we have this Azure hybrid and we've got customers that deploy their workloads to Azure first, and they use an Azure first model. And then they have selective workloads that uh, they want to operate on premises. Um, oftentimes we see some use cases where maybe they've got some you know, confidential computing type use cases, and they would just prefer to have some of those workloads on-prem in their own storage. But for a lot of their say corporate use cases, they would continue to go ahead and run those in Azure. And I think the big benefit here is, once again, that unified management. So it's not like you have to go to two different tools. Uh, you go to the same tool and you will find both of those deployments in place. And then the third, and I would say it's been interesting, like we actually have had a fair bit of interest in this. You know, multi-cloud is also something that customers are interested in. And what this could be is, you know, typically some of these larger organizations will have multi-cloud strategy needs. And you know, they may want to deploy some workloads in Azure, some workloads in some of these competing public clouds as well. And sometimes that is driven by proximity to specific line of business systems that exist, or it also could be subsidiaries. And some of those subsidiaries may have different needs in different regions. And as a result, use some of the different sort of technology stacks that are available to them. And you know, by being able to use the hybrid deployment model, they could standardize on logic apps and then choose to host them in, in different uh, manners. And I would also say ISVs kind of play into this role too, where we do have some ISVs that like to build logic app solution using our platform, but then actually they want to be able to have more control over how those workloads are hosted. In many regards, it could be co-hosted alongside their solution. So that becomes quite important for them as well. So the, the mental model we like to use when talking about this is that you go ahead and you build your workflows in the same manner. You can go ahead and build those in VS Code. You can go ahead and build those in the Azure portal. Then you'll go ahead and check them into source control and plug them into your CI CD deployment pipelines. Then from there, it really becomes a decision of where do you want to go ahead and host these runtimes. It could be a Microsoft managed uh, solution, which involves say the workflow service plan or even the app service plan, or sorry, the app service environment, rather ACE v3, or it could be customer managed. And in this case, it would be Arc enabled Kubernetes that you would go ahead and deploy these workloads to through Azure Arc and through a custom location. But you know, regardless of which approach you take, uh, you would still be able to go ahead and leverage the Azure portal for your management and monitoring experiences. Now, here's where I'm gonna jump into a demo. There is a sort of demo that I did provide at Integrate, which involved customer service, and we you know, went through a fairly elaborate business process, and we overlaid business process tracking on top of it. 
But where the hybrid comes into the place is this safety management solution. Uh, when we do have a, a safety issue that's identified as part of this business process, we do need to send that request over to the safety management system, which happens to run on premises. And this is how we can see both an Azure managed solution working in conjunction with an on-premises solution through a VNet connected uh, you know, network connection and leveraging SQL Server uh, to store some of that information. So I'll go ahead and uh, run this demo. All right, here we go. Uh, here we've got a Logic app that has been deployed uh, via Azure Arc into a connected environment. So you can see those specific details there. You can see the application URL and the connected environment. If we go ahead and, and click on the, uh, the table of contents, the TOC, we see that we've got a specific Logic Apps base and uh, we've got the image set uh, set up there. We also do have the scaling rules that we can also use uh, inside of Logic Apps. Uh, don't pay too much attention to some of the, you know, the text and some of the images. Uh, we were sort of working through some of those, uh, some of those bugs. But here we've got a couple workflows that have been deployed. Uh, in this case, we've got uh, a workflow. We can see the run history. We can see that it's you know, processed several different records. If we go ahead and we click into it, uh, we'll go ahead and see the run history for that particular workflow. And we can see that we've you know got uh, the breadcrumbs that follow along. We we have a you know a little bug there uh, around the connections, but uh, that is something that uh, is uh, you know being worked on and will be addressed shortly. Uh, here we are using the data mapper, and so that's something where we would go ahead and we can upload those data maps uh, into our uh, solution and go ahead and call it. Uh, there you saw we also had some. Uh, built-in connectors, so we were using uh, SQL Server, we were also using HTTP, and then we also had managed connector, or the Azure connectors, in this case, it was Microsoft Teams. So that was a, a brief demo, certainly more to come, but uh, that'll give you a little bit of a, a sneak peek in terms of, uh, you know, how this will look inside of the Azure portal. All right, so let's just talk a little bit about the feature sets that are available to us. So for the early access preview, we support those semi-connected scenarios. Uh, we support VS Code and Azure Portal support for authoring. We will support XSLT 2.0 support, .NET 8 custom code support. So that's in preview for you know both the cloud and, and hybrid version. I look for a video on the channel about that as well. People might uh, be wondering, okay, where is storage? Uh, like, well, how do you configure that? Like, what does that look like? In this case, we are using SQL as a storage provider. So your run history will be stored in a SQL server. That's uh, where all of your logs will be stored. Uh, I showed you that one screen about scaling. So that is target-based scaling. Uh, we do provide a, a base image with an extension bundle. And so what ends up happening is that your your code and your artifacts, they actually will reside on persistent storage inside of your infrastructure. So when you go to deploy these things, you will be prompted to provide that network share where your artifacts and workflows will go ahead and be stored. And then your base image with the extension bundle, that's something that is managed by Microsoft and pushed down, or I guess pulled down rather to your infrastructure. Uh, for the Kubernetes flavors or distributions that will support initially, uh, we're talking about AKS and AKS HCI. If you are using different distributions, definitely interested to let you know, uh, or let us know because um, you know we do appreciate that there will be uh, a variety of needs in this area. And uh, you did see that we are using the container apps connected environment. What this mapping actually looks like is for a logic app it is essentially a container app under the hood that would live inside of a connected environment. Now, in terms of public preview, we do have some current gaps, so just wanna be transparent around that. We are working on supporting the file connector using the SMB protocol. And then the next three all have a very interesting dependency. So SAP connector, XS, XSLT 1.0 plus .NET Framework support, and .NET Framework custom code support. Naturally, these all have a dependency on .NET Framework. 
what gets a little bit interesting about .NET Framework is that that typically runs on top of Windows. And so naturally when we talk about Kubernetes, we're, we're typically talking about Linux. And so we are doing some things from an engineering perspective to go ahead and address this and allow you to run your .NET dependencies on these uh, clusters. Um, there's an interesting technology that uh, we're taking advantage of inside of Microsoft. We're still working through some of the details, so I can share more about that a little bit later. We do are also anticipating a schema update for the SQL storage as well when we hit public preview. And the other thing is that we do have a billing model approved. Uh, so that's something I can't talk about just yet, otherwise I'll get in some trouble. But when we hit to public preview, we will have a billing model. Now to go ahead and use the early access preview, there aren't any additional charges. Naturally, if you're using like an AKS instance, there's charges for that. You're using SQL Server, there's charges for that. But there isn't a logic apps charge for you know the, the compute anyways. If you go ahead and use managed connectors, naturally you would still incur charges there. But um, we will be able to share more information about the billing model in uh, the not too distant future. All right, so if this sounds interesting to you, uh, go ahead and fill out that form that I talked about earlier. This will nominate you for the early access program. Now, what are the benefits? Uh, so you'll get early access to the latest software that we're developing. You will get access to the Microsoft product group. Uh, you'll have the ability to influence and shape the roadmap as well, which I think is is pretty important, you know, to make sure that your needs are being met as soon as possible. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's no logic apps hybrid metering during early access. Now, just from a requirements perspective, you know, we do expect people to go ahead and install and, and try out the hybrid deployment, participate in feedback sessions with the product group. And uh, this is something that we would want to work in a non or in a non-disclosure agreement environment and NDA but that's something that we could certainly work through getting you if you don't have one today. So that is kind of the early uh, bits around our hybrid deployment model. Happy to follow up with any of you offline if you've got more questions as well. Thanks.